a lot of times this happens. Oh, nice. But for some reason, oh, oh you see that, Lee? That is, that's, pretty that's gold. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Lee here. If you want to sail your boat better, if you want to sail your boat faster, or if you want to get somewhere quicker, whether you race or you cruise, or if you sail a Sunfish, a Laser, an Optimus, a Flying Scott, a Catamaran, or even an America's Cup boat, you really need to know this information. In this video, I'm going to talk about wind indicators and telltales. Now, why would you want to have telltales on your sail? And why would you want to have wind indicators around so you can figure out where the wind is? You can go just sailing without them and you should be just fine if you just want to go tool around. If you know the nuances of the wind going around your sail on both sides, this will make you help you sail faster and more efficiently. Uh-oh, we're picking up speed here. And sailing faster in a sailboat is a lot more fun. Some people say they like to sail without wind indicators or telltales, and they like to sail by the feel. However, in my experience, sailing by the feel is slower. Unless you don't care about where you're going and how long does it take, it will be helpful if you use telltales. It helps you trim your sails so your boat is most efficient. If you don't like to use telltales, it's like sailing blind. Like playing a game of pin the tail on the donkey where you're blindfolded and you have to stick a tail on a picture of a donkey. Also in this video, I'm going to show you different types of wind indicators fabricated by different people in the Sunfish class. Before we get on to the video, please trim that like button down there and turn it blue. I really appreciate it. What are telltales? Telltales are little ribbons or yarn that's attached to the sail that shows you how the air is going across the sail. The telltales go up, down, or straight back or even forward, and that'll tell you a lot on how the sails are trimmed. And when I mean sails are trimmed, I don't mean trim them with a scissor. I mean when the sails are pulled in and out in relation to the hull of the boat, and that's called sail trim. When you're looking at this telltale, it means different flowing up or down, and whether on the other side of the boat or on your side of the boat, usually the windward side. So telltales can be made commercially or they can be made at your home. This one's made out of sailcloth. Some others are made of ribbon. Some are made of yarn or wool yarn and those can be called woolies. Some are made of cassette tape or VHS tape. Now when I mention wind indicators, usually I will use something like this or this. They make other commercial type of wind indicators like a sea vane. I'll leave some descriptions down below. What do you use for wind indicators? Leave a comment down below. Now depending on what point of sail you are on will determine what to look for in the telltales and the wind indicator. Some wind indicators are off the sail and they're usually at either the masthead or you could tie some 8-track tape cassette tapes on the shrouds and they also will work. Others are commercially available like I showed you here before and they could be either on the front of the mast or the spar or at another location usually pretty easy to see for instance at eye level. Also you could have more than a few telltales on a sail and some people like to put them all along the luff and have multiple levels of telltales. When you learn something on a sunfish, you could translate that to many different boats. Now the bigger the sail, sometimes you need it more often. A Flying Scott usually has three sets of telltales on their jib. Now a bigger boat or a cruising boat or something 40, 50 feet long, or maybe even a little smaller, you could put telltales on your jib and then you could figure out when you head into the wind where to put your jib cars. So telltales are applied to the sail. Most of the time you have some sort of adhesive tape, which is usually sail repair tape or some sort of tape that you can commercially get and this ribbon and you could just stick them right to the sail. I like personally to put the telltales not right on top of each other and have one a little bit slightly lower than the other so that you can see if they were parallel. If they're on top of each other, then you might not see the difference easily. Now on the top of the mast, you could use a masthead fly. Some have little flags on them, some have arrows, and some just use, some just use like these ribbons or cassette tape. I like to use this. This is an old coat hanger that I bent 
and I could bend it and depending on the angle of my upper spar if I'm on my sunfish I like to put a bend in it so it just sticks straight up and I basically put a loop right there and I tied this sailcloth there I also can use a track tape so I like this what I really like using the the masthead fly for is when I'm trying to sail by the lee this uh, wind indicator will actually be opposite direction of the sail so when you're going downwind in certain boats especially boats that don't have shrouds you can do something what's called sailing by the lee for instance, if you're in a laser, an optimist, or a sunfish, that means the wind is not hitting the luff first. The wind is actually hitting the leech first, going downwind. And that's very, very fast way to sail. And telltales help you determine that. This is sailing by the lee, meaning your sail leech is towards the wind. And I know that because my wind indicator is flowing from port direction to the starboard direction from leech to love. So if you're getting any value from this video, please smash that like button. I really appreciate it. So what's really nice about knowing how to use masthead flies like this on top of a mast is when you're racing. So when you look at someone else's masthead fly, whether they're behind you and you're going downwind, if that masthead fly is pointing at your boat or pointing at your sails, that means they're taking your air. If you want to attack someone going downwind and they're in front of you going downwind, you put yourself pointing, have that wind indicator pointing to you, and that means you're taking their air. For the most part, you want to see your telltales stream back from luff to leech. That means from the forward part of the sail to the back part of the sail. When it's light to moderate winds, for the most part, the most important telltale is the one on the leeward side. Most of the time you want that streaming back if you're sailing upwind or on a reach and that's generally the fastest and most efficient way to sail with telltales. If the both telltales are streaming back, that's pretty efficient. However, when the wind starts to get higher, sometimes that inside windward telltale starts to lift up. So one telltale on the leeward side of the sail might stream back and the windward side might stream up and that's still fast. What if the telltale is not streaming back and it's streaming down? In moderate winds to light winds, if the lured telltale is streaming down, that means you could head up, meaning head up into the wind. Telltales. The red telltale is facing down, so I can head up. Heading up to the right. Oh, now I'm luffing. Heading up too much of luff. So now it's streaming. Not loving. Streaming, not loving. That's good. Now we're hitting something. Same thing here. They're either facing forward, the, the lured ones, the green ones now. So that means I'm not, they're, they'll head up a little bit. Now they're going down. I still get head up a little bit. So heading up. Now they're streaming back. I'm not luffing. Now, if I start, if the sail in the, in the front starts to shake like that, that's luffing. These are going straight back, but since I'm luffing, I pull the tiller towards me, get that luff out of there, and make sure they're streaming back. I like to have these two sets of telltales here. One is right behind the mast for starboard. One in the middle, this is for port, really. The one in the front right there, it's getting bad air from the mast, so I don't pay attention to those on port. I have one up there too, above the sunfish. So I use these mostly for port. Now in some venues, especially inland lakes, the weather could be really, really unpredictable and downright terribly light. So if it's blowing less than four, five, or six miles an hour, sometimes people use wind indicators hanging off the front spar of a sunfish, for instance, or the front of a laser, and they use really sensitive instruments, for instance, feathers or cassette tapes. Back in the day, Paul Odegaard, North American champion, developed the Feathermate, and he used feathers and sold them all over the place, and he developed something that everyone 
everyone has used one way or another in the Sunfish class. Double hanger thing with a PVC pipe. Yeah, with the, the Yeah, with this uh, v, this cassette tape. Carolyn, you don't know what cassette tapes are. Like, you know? yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a, this is the, no, the Lake Bluff this, method. This, this is Led Zeppelin right here. <laughs> exactly. Led, and that's Led Casey Zeppelin. and the Sunshine Band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and then why do you have a feather down here and then this up here? Because uh, what I do is when I'm looking at waves, mm -hmm. I, I like to look forward. Okay. And then downwind, I use these because they're oh. real sensitive. So I use this upwind and that one downwind. This one doesn't work downwind? Well, it does, but it, it's, it gets a little bit disturbing. Oh. So we have Doug called Kynan's boat. Doug's from Rochester Community Club in New York. And uh, congratulations on your, uh, did you finish second? In yeah, the second in the International Masters. Excellent. Thankfully, so, I appreciate that. Uh, and uh, so Doug, Doug is, uh, Doug knows what he's talking about. So let, let's take a look at, oh, look at this. You got the ram's horns here. <laughs> Why yeah, is it up is, like this? Why? See, this is one of those high quality telltales that you uh, you can get at the dollar store. Nice. I, mean, I think it's like 10 cents there. <laughs> That's excellent. And <laughs> Actually, uh, long story short, I did have a, one of those old style clip-on ones, my last one, and somebody like pulled it right off on the first day. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was, you, it's a sad story. And then you tape it so it, it holds there. Oh, yeah. Now, why, why do you have them curved here versus straight across like that Bob Finley? Good, you know what? That is an excellent question. That's something my dad taught me a long time ago. Because if you keep it like straight, a lot of times this happens. Oh, nice. But for some reason. Oh, oh you see that, Lee? That is. That's pretty That's good. gold. <laughs> Another reason why to pay attention to telltales is when you're coming out of a tack or a jive. It's very important, especially when you're racing, is if you have a tendency to understeer or oversteer through the tack or the jive, then you could pay attention to the telltales. Now, if you use a crew and you have a second or third person, they could pay attention to the telltales also and ask you to head up or fall off just to get yourself around the water faster. When I'm sailing with Ryan Messina, my crew in the winter on our Vanguard 15, a lot of times we come out of attack and I'm paying attention, just flattening the boat, trying to steer and looking at all the other boats on the race course and making sure I don't hit anybody. So he'll tell me whether or not we can go up. You could head up or up, up, up. And that helps a lot. Some people like one set of telltales and some people like multiple sets of telltales. Some people like to put telltales on the leech and some people just blast their telltales all over the place. When you're sailing in different conditions, different points of sail, you should learn what telltales are best in what situations. For instance, when you're sailing a sunfish, the trim is different on starboard than it is on port. When you're on port side on a sunfish, the sail actually hits the mast. You need to put the telltales a little further further back on the sail in a sunfish and use those instead of the ones you would use when you're sailing on starboard tack. So depending on your style and what you like to use, most of the time having a set of telltales about 12 inches from the luff will work for a sunfish. With a sunfish, because of the mast disturbance of air from the mast, you also want to go a couple of feet back of that mast and put another set of telltales pretty much on the same level between either the top of the window or maybe a foot above the window. Some people even like to put one telltale on the leech of the sunfish sail, which also is really important in something like a flying scot. So the telltale on the leech mainly is really good for sailing downwind. If it's curling around the sail and you're sailing down wind the air is hitting the leech first meaning you're sailing by the leech. now when you're sailing something like a flying scot and you're sailing up winds there's a little bit nuance on that upper telltale from the top batten on a flying scot you want the telltale to be actually stalling about 50 percent of the time Now, some people don't like to use a masthead fly because it kind of hurts their neck when they're looking up so a lot of times they'll use one of those feather mates or a sea vein that attaches to the front of their spar and they could see the direction of the wind and that's really helpful especially when sailing downwind. Now when you're sailing a boat with shrouds like a bigger boat just say like a Vanguard 15, a JY15 or anything bigger than that I like to also attach VHS tape and just tie it around maybe a foot around the port shroud and the starboard shroud and you can figure out if you're on the right jibe also. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I read all the comments. Now, one special wind indicator was invented 
several years ago, and I first learned about it from Derek Jackson of the Sandling Association of the North Jersey Lakes, or Sandgill. I finally figured out who actually invented it, and it was Chris Williams who invented the straw with yarn wind indicator. It is a great advantage because the straw keeps the yarn off of anything and it doesn't catch anything. Also, if someone hits it or rubs against it when the mast and the sails are down when it's in the boat lot, then it just bends. It's not really that big of a deal. And it's also very inexpensive. It's basically the cost of a piece of yarn and some tape to apply it to the mast. However, in this day and age, plastic straws are becoming really a problem to get. So save those plastic straws for wind indicators. So let's thank Chris Williams for inventing this and Derek Jackson nicknamed it the Windlindicator. So there you have it, there's the video. If you like what you see, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know when we come out with a new video. Thanks and I'll see you on the water.